You guys might have to hit that approval button if you haven't already. Sorry, everyone. Um, Diane, I'm just going to be your moderator for today. Um, actually, you see me as Kathy, K A space F E E, on Sewing for Renaissance Festivals. I'm one of the admins. Um, this one is Serger Threading Basics. If there's anything you missed and you want to go back through, we do put this up on YouTube. Okay, we do put this up on YouTube. Let me give you the. Here's the link. So if you ever want to go back and see and see any of the past classes, um, they're there as a, on YouTube. Um, all right, that's all I have to say. Nikki, it's all up to you. Great. If you have any questions during the class, please feel free to ask them because I'm just going to show you how I've cleaned machines. And I've been doing this for about 15 years. I'm not a licensed technician for this. This is just how I do it. So if you're not comfortable with any of this, you don't have to do it on your own machine. So today I'm going to teach you how to clean everything from a top load and a front load foot. Oh, you can't see this right now. One of these, and how to take them apart and put them back together. And then I'm going to do how to take care of your serger and how to clean it. I have not cleaned my machines just for this class. So I've already went ahead and started with removing the screws from the feed dog plates, just so I can remove this piece. That's why that's magnetic, so that you do not lose your screws because you can't put your machine back any other way. I'm just going to pop this off with a little release tab there. And I have not cleaned my machine and it really does need it. Uh, if you sew with a lot of linens, it does make a lot of dust. And that's why I've been sewing with it for the last couple of months. Couple of months. Yeah. I'm just going to use a paintbrush or you can get like a sewing service kit from a local grocery store that has a sewing aisle or from Joann's or Michael's or one of the other sewing machine or fabric shops. Um, so first off, never use compressed air on your machine. You will mess up the springs. They do have some delicate springs in here that will pop off if you do it. I've done this by experience. I have a test machine that I keep back here. And this one I've had, and it's my little test dummy. It's an operator. And this machine you're going to see me work a lot more on because I'm going to go inside the inner working and show you where this one has a timing issue and it'll wrap the thread around this. So back to my other machine, which is a digital project runway. Normally they say keep the lights off by taking out all the needles, the foots out of the way so I don't step on it. So I don't have to worry about anything going off. But usually when we do so, you do have to turn it. Well, when you clean your sewing machine, you want to have to turn it off just for safety. But I'm teaching a class, so I need this light. So I'm just going to go in here and use a paintbrush. And I like one that has a bit of thinner or softer bristles. It helps grab the lint. And I have a trash can over here. And I'm just going to go in and dust it. Be gentle around any screws. Um, when you're sewing and you have a lot of buildup underneath the speed dog, it's not going to catch the fabric. This is what pulls the fabric through your machine. So you're going to make sure that this stays clean. Okay. Do I want to have a good view on this or do I need to adjust the camera? Uh, so far, it looks like we can see everything, but I do have a question for you. Yeah. You different size brushes? Yes, because some areas you can't really get into with something this long and bulky at the top. You might need something smaller like this. This is a standard like cheap multi-pack brush. I keep a bunch of these on hand because I lose them. And you can get down under because under this um, mechanical piece, there's an open chamber and that likes to collect dust. Okay, so the brushes do need to have a long handle. Long handle, yes, so you can get down to everything. Because every time this one dry area down here will fall off. 
And especially if you work with like fleeces, if you make plushies, linens, if you do uh, a lot of clothing, quilting, stuff like that, this fabric will go and leave a lot of lint, like a lot. Oh, wow. It looks like a whole different bobbin right there. Yeah. Um, I did take out a piece from this earlier, which is this little piece. And this will have to go back in. And I'll show you how this lines back up. Because this has to sit underneath this. And this piece of felt actually protects the machine from rubbing this plastic piece. This is what houses the bobbin. Um, I'll change over the camera in a minute, show you the other machine on how it's going to be on a front load because cleaning the two is quite different sometimes depending on how you had to get at the machine. Now, do you put anything on your brushes? No, nope, this is just dry and clean. Um, sometimes you can get a cloth in there. I have a dusting cloth right here and it just picks up dust. You don't want anything on your brushes. You don't want to get this wet. You're not actually washing your sewing machine. You're more or less just giving a nice dusting and you're going to oil it. Sometimes you yeah, get gently blow in there, but don't ever use compressed air. Please don't. Personal experience, that was the worst mistake in my life and I spent four days fixing it. Four days, That's a long time. That looks pretty good. Well, it looks like a whole new insides. <laughs> Sometimes you do get just that is trapped down here where this rope bends. They're going to spin this and see how much you can get out. I'm having a real hard time hearing. Is there any way to make yourself any louder? I've gotten mine up as loud as I can. Uh, is there a way I can switch out the audio for the one that's on my phone? Uh, well, just turn the one on your phone on and turn the one on your laptop off. And then we should be able to hear you close up. Recording in progress. All right, let me All right, we don't hear you. Did you say, yeah, we don't hear you at all. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Let me see if I can move this one over here. Uh, you might need to turn the speaker off on the, no, yeah, turn the speaker off on the laptop also. That might do it. Uh, turn this, I already turned the speaker off over there and I need to turn. Okay, there, we okay, hear you. That's much better. All right, sorry. I know I've been like losing my voice kind of this week. So what did you not catch? So I can repeat it and see if I can go back over that. Um, I really didn't catch anything yet. I was trying to get my, my thing turned up as much as I could and all right, so what I've done already is I've opened up the top of this machine and removed this piece and the plastic cover that feels in the rest of the gap. I removed the two screws that are a part of it. I removed this one piece and this fits underneath the feed dog. And this is a feed dog. Okay, this I got that, feed. yep. All right. And when you do this, do not use compressed air. It will mess up the springs that are inside the machine. There's a spring right here. I'm not sure if you can see it. Right. And usually you do have the power off to the machine for safety, but I'm teaching a class and there's a light that's needed. And you're just going to go through with different brushes and try to get as much of this lint as possible out of here, because that really does affect the performance of the machine. Okay, and, good. All right. So I'm going to be moving her out of the way, and I'm going to be bringing this one back over in a minute. 
after I put her back together. So with this machine, there's only a couple places you put oil. Uh, mostly any place that has a moving part. And I like to wipe that down to make sure all the old oil is out because as you can see on the brushes, that's kind of what helps also make it stick. You don't put anything on the brushes, but the excess oil will work its way out over time. All right, and from there, I got this machine oil. It's a multi-purpose machine oil, and I'm going to open it up. And with this, you don't need a lot. Just a little drop will go a long way. And I just dropped it right here on this bolt that connects the centerpiece and I'm going to wipe up the excess. This piece right here goes up and down. So I'm going to oil that to help. And already this is working a lot better. Drop my feed dogs. Raise my feed dog. Little drop there. Little drop there. Just work again. From here, you can actually just look at this and just the fast way of doing it. You're just trying to get it done. But there we go. So it's already been cleaned out and now it just needs to be put back together. So to do that, I'm going to bring back the, over these pieces. And first I'm going to put this back in and I'm going to try to line up this piece of felt underneath that feed dog piece. This is what's preventing it from catching. And it has a white arrow right here that matches the white dot and I had that pointed to each other. So. There we go. It sits pretty well. From there, you're going to take this piece. And I'm going to raise this to the top point. And I'm going to tuck this metal edge under here. I actually put it in correctly. Tuck this metal edge under here. But not too far. And just nestle it in there. And on top of that, goes this piece and they should click together because they're attached and now this is one solid unit again and from there you just put in the screws can we and pause my question have... yes ma'am yes ma'am I, I was just asking if uh, diane or rebecca had any questions oh okay i thought you had a question no i'm good all right I'm good too. Okay. And right now I'm just using a dime to put these back in. I do have the key to the sewing machine, but it's a little big at times with my hands. And the feed dogs are moving freely. Not here. I have a screw. All right. So I can't access this one. So I'm just going to show you on the other machine. I have to take this part off. All right. So I'm going to be turning her back off because she is clean. And there's nothing else I need to do to her. From there, you just put the needles in 
the feet back on. So this machine in my charger takes same adapter. And this is an older machine that has a front load. I'm going to turn this around. So. Right. So on this machine, I've taken this piece off, which is what holds in the casing. That's this, and it sets in with these hands. So I've already taken that out because I need to get to the inside. I'm going to turn the light off on this one because it should be bright enough to see. And this machine, I'm going to adjust the camera so you can see and I can see. All right. So with this machine, I'm going to pop that out. And this one, it's a bit more simple. It's just one piece. You'll still take off this top assembly and you can get out the feed dogs. And from there, you're just going to dust this one out. This is a cheaper machine that I actually learned how to uh, work on machines on because it has a timing issue in the top half. And I'm just going to dust it out. I worked with glitter on this machine. I don't know what type of fabric that was because this machine has been in storage for the last five years and I had not used it in about six. There we go. All right, so I'm going to adjust the camera to look up into this. Please don't fall. All right, so this machine has a few things wrong with it. So I'm going to take this light bulb out. And just going to unscrew this so that when I turn the machine back on, it's not going to blind y'all. This one is just a standard light bulb. You get it at Hobby Lobby. So machine back on. I can show you that when I go, this hits a bit too hard or too high and it will snag my uh, thread. It makes a loop. And with the top half machine, you're going to want to put oil right here. Just a little bit and work through. Which part were you putting the oil on? Uh, there is like a area right here, right where the rod goes straight down that goes to the bottom of the machine. You go and put it right there where it's going to create friction. So right here, right where this metal piece connects to the rest of the assembly. Let me see. I have a light above my head and it should warm up in a minute so you have a better view. But right here. Right there. And then you also go ahead and put it up here at the top part of the assembly. So where the rod goes straight through, you'll see it. And you're going to put a dot of oil right there. This will help with the friction and help the machine move a lot better. But not too much because it will drip down this rod right here and it will go onto your needle and your fabric. You're going to wipe a little bit of that off. All right, the next part I'm going to oil is right here because it does move. It rotates. So I'm just going to bring it up. Oh, 
I'm middle of class. Oh, thank you. That's my boyfriend. He's bringing me coffee now. All right, there we go. So I added oil right in there. So this just moves a lot easier, a lot smoother. Normally I do run the machine a little bit just to help work it in. And back down here. Well, it looks like I'm going to be holding this and not trying to fix that again. So down here, I'm going to add oil right there. Right on that key. And I'm going to run it. There we go. So the machine has been oiled completely. So in here we have this has been oiled. The top part right, right there has been oiled. And then I have oiled the piece that rotates right there that has been oiled. So those couple of places is what makes everything a lot smoother because this is not grinding as much as it used to. All right, so I'm going to turn off my second camera so I can fix it and then I'll move over to the serger. Do you have any questions on this? All right, give me one second. I might have to just go back to one camera if this is not going to work again. Is there any questions about the class or what I've done so far? Very thorough so far. All right. Sorry about all the uh, camera adjusting. Trying to make sure everyone can see what I'm doing. All right, so now I'm just going to go over and grab my serger and bring her over here and see what all she needs to have done to her today.
I'm so happy that you guys edit these videos because I think you guys can have a snap reel of how many times I've dropped my phone. <laughs> like, I'm not the most coordinated. That is not my expertise. Not a problem. It is dark. Let me see if I can. And there's no way for me to adjust the brightness on this, unfortunately. All right, let me just plug her in and get her light on then. Well, that's my feeling. Oh, I'm going to get another another camera holder eventually. All right, technical difficulties, but we're back. So with this machine, I've already taken the screw off the top so I can take this feed dog plate out. Same thing, sand off. Make sure it's all clean. You don't want dust back in here. That's the point of cleaning this. So with these machines, they do get a lot dirtier than the sewing machines because it's actually cutting fabric, which Okay, I have the cutting setting off, just in case, because these don't have safeties. Or at least mine doesn't. And same thing, you're going to want to get in there and dust, because you're going to have pieces of thread, like this, that's just living in there. Dust bunnies. And you just going to dust it out. I want to switch brushes to see if I can get there in there a bit more because this is really dirty. I have not cleaned this in a couple months. Same thing with this, don't use compressed air. You can lightly blow on it, but nothing too major. I am going to add a vacuum after this. This is a lot of dust. Here, I can put this back in. It just slides right in, please. What was the piece that you took out? Uh, it oh, wasn't it's working for me. Yeah, it's a finger. It's a finger. I'm just going to put this back in if I remember how to. So I guess okay. taking it and shaking it upside down isn't the thing to do? No, <laughs> don't, don't. You're going to mess up your springs. <laughs> the one I would do that to is this brother machine that's in the back, because that's my little test project. And I have, I have lost my patience with it a few times. Uh, this does have a yellow arrow, so that's how I figured out where it went. And this has a yellow arrow. They color code everything here. Oh, please don't throw your machine. Please don't shake it like, like it's a Skittles packet. Like, please don't. These things are very, they may look sturdy. but I'm not going to. I was just joking. <laughs> I know. But there's I just, just there's so that. much stuff in here. Yeah, I can see someone losing their patience and like just going, you know what? I'm tired of this machine. I'm just going to get a new one and just throw it out of the wall. Like, we've all been there while we're sewing. Like, goodbye machine. Well, it's funny because I tell myself every time, if I just lightly brushed it out after every project, I wouldn't be in the boat where I'm cleaning out so much stuff. And then sometimes I get so frustrated, I just take it to the repair shop and say, do it for me. It was only like two projects I've done on here. The uh, last class I did, and then I just hemmed a pair of pants. And that's how much dust is in here. Now I'm just going to take off the uh, elbow so I can just get the sleeve area cleaned out and dusted. This machine is dirty. I have abused these sergers so bad with projects that I'm, I can't believe that they're still working after like, I think I've had one for like six years and one for five. And oh, wow. these are the, you know, the cheap, 
brothers that I got from Walmart and they're holding up. So I want to take care of them, you know? Yeah. What was the biggest project that you ever had that you had to run through it? Um, I make uh, these like little belt bags for Renaissance Fair and things. Ooh. So I'll do a batch of like 20, 30 of those at a time. Um, and then the reason I got the Bernina was because I make these bustles and I use upholstery fabric. So when I'm going through upholstery fabric, um, it's a little heavy for these. And the Bernina, because it has a top cutter, is supposed to be better for that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I decided not to abuse these any more than I need to and that uh, I need to take care of them. Have you ever had your machine overheat? No. The last part Never. I did on this was part of this thread, and it made the machine overheat so bad. It was huh. this white uh, gauze fabric I needed to hem. It made it heat overheat so bad that I actually had to turn my machine off and let it cool down. Huh. Yeah. And this is just a regular Brothers that you were talking about. This one is a yeah. uh, 1634D. Mm -hmm. And it's a $300 machine. It's relatively cheap based off of the price of other ones. Right. And that's the only issue I've ever had with it. No, it's never overheated on me. All but right. it's, it's struggling with the heavier upholstery fabric. So, what type of needles do you have in there? Um, sharp ones. Sharp ones. <laughs> um, sharp is there is there a special needle that I should be buying for it? Uh, you're using canvas fabric, right? And yeah, yeah. I'm I'm using uh, duck fabrics between ten and fourteen ounces. All right. So you can use either universal needles, right. or you can get heavy duty needles. And okay. I'll I have not put heavy duty needles in this. I probably should. Yeah, because they do fit like the regular needles. I've used them. Yeah. I use them in my regular machine and in my, I have an industrial um, free arm. God, just when I think I'm done, I get another. Yeah, this is this is about half of what I've. Let me see there. Oh my gosh! Wait, that's what I've taken out so far. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it makes a lot of um, a lot of dust in here. But when I was looking up the Bernina, when the Bernina was frozen, and um, when I was looking up how to fix that. It, it told me a bunch of things that should be done with all sergers, and I was like, I better learn how to take care of these. Have you ever used those little tiny vacuum cleaner accessories to get in there to suck this stuff out? Mickey, did you hear what she said? Or are you, oh, you're muted, Mickey. Um, all right, hey, can you hear me now? There, there we go. go. <laughs> Have you ever used any of those little um, vacuum cleaner accessories to suck stuff out? Uh, no, I haven't. I just avoid generally using pressure, uh, any type of like pressurized air or something with a high power, because I don't want to snag any of these uh, springs that are in here or mess something up. Um, when you said that your Bernina was frozen, does that mean it's seized or is it like frozen themed? 
Um, it was actually, it hadn't been used in a couple of years, according to the person I bought it from. Mm -hmm. And the, um, I don't know what the parts are called, but basically the part of the serger that you're supposed to uh, oil, um, yep. where it goes up and down off the... Uh, the feed dogs? No, not the feed dogs. The feed dogs are fine. It was the... Can't bring my thing over, but the, um, let me see. I'm just going to go ahead and oil this little piece right here. Um, I um, think you might have been oiling stuff before when you were muted, so we didn't hear. What yeah, I, I was trying to explain where I was oiling, because this one doesn't really need oil since it's still relatively new, and I barely used it before I moved, but if I was to oil it, it would be right here and right here where this screw is. Just a little bit, not a lot. Okay. Just yeah, that, that, that first place you showed, not that. The other place was where the Bernina was caught up. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I and I just oiled it. it. I let it sit overnight. And um, I, you know, it, it worked the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, WD-40 fixes everything. Well, it was sewing machine oil. I... Yeah. Um, I know a guy that refurbishes uh, vintage machines. I have two vintages in my room that he actually refurbished and he told me WD-40 because they're cast iron. Yeah. Yeah, but my phone's not wanting to stay on uh, the stand because I have uh, machine oil on my hands and it's on my phone now. So that stand's not going to stay down. So I'm going to have to see what I can do on the phone holding. So, Hmm. Yeah, I have a couple 400 series singers and a couple 500 series singers. How many machines do you have in total? What? How many machines? Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh. At last count, there were 12. But I really, I only use five of them consistently and all the time. Um, the... Uh, some of them, like I have a, a machine from my grandmother that's a treadle. I don't use that one. And I have a couple other ones that are all metal that um, one of them I want to get, uh, it's a knee control and I need it to be a foot control. So I need to adjust, I need to switch it to that. And the cord's too short, otherwise I could do it. And um, there's my dog. And, uh, but the, when I have, Heavy stuff, but not heavy enough for my industrial. I use the um, singers. It sounds like we all collect sewing machines. Well, you know, when it looks like a 1950s uh, blue Chevy, you, you got to take it. I mean, come on, they're beautiful. <laughs> And the Rocketeers, I mean, who can resist a Rocketeer, you know? All right, I think I'm about done with this. Oh, now that's a beauty, Mickey. Oh, nice. back together. So yeah, my machine said no. So I'm just going to put this back together, which is just putting this back on. And then I'm going to thread it and show you how I thread this because it has been cleaned. It doesn't need any more oil because it's still relatively new. And I hardly used this before I moved. So let's try to get this done before my phone decides it wants to jump again. 
Oh. All right. And this has one screw. I'm just going to snap its foot back on. That's something you can say about your machine, which I know you would snap the foot off. Where did I put my foot? Yeah, my phone's saying absolutely no to this. I'm so sorry about all the things you're going to have to do. Well, I never knew you could take the foot plate off, so that was helpful in and of itself. Yeah, I've, I've abused my machines, to be completely honest, and I had to learn to put them back together. So, YouTube. Most of everything I have learned is from YouTube originally. And then I adopted it my way. Yeah. I do have like a little brush that came with it, but it's not that big. I don't like it. I have very bulky hands. I can't find my paint brushes, so that's what I'm using today. I'm using the little brush that came with it. Yeah, I just use paint brushes because I need to keep my hands back so everyone can see. Sitting over here, just grabbing stuff off the floor. I'm trying to make my camera not fall again. Yes, thank you, babe. Give me one second. Ah, uh -huh. try to fall again. Sewing has solutions. Thank you. I'll sleep on those things. Love you. Yay, fresh coffee. Oh, there it is. Got my foot. So I'm just going to like this. Lower it and press the button back here and I'll snap back on. There we go. It works. So my phone's not going to fall because I've got clips on it. All right, so I'm going to grab some cones that I have. These were gifted to me. They don't match. But that works perfectly well for this video. And white. All right. So I'm going to show you how I thread this. So I can't make my camera any taller. But I'm going to start with the far right thread. Oh, it'll help if I put the needle back in. Hold on, before I do that and realize halfway through the video that I didn't do this, I need to put the needles back in my machine. I took them out for safety. And this has a little hole right here. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> The baby's out there. There's a little hole right about here that blends in for the Allen wrench that I'm going to be using. And I just got a multi-tool Allen wrench right here. Now I'm just going to put my needles back in. Uh, these are just standard needles that I have. I can get it to focus. These are just universals. Yes, I say use serger's needles, but these work too. Uh, the numbers are 110 over 18. All right. And I'm just going to line them up.
by the way, while she's doing that, um, everything that she said with the cleaning, um, I wrote down as she was doing it. So the file is in the chat if you want to download it. Oh, thank you. You're amazing. No problem. These will come up through the top and they have a uh, little plate that this applies pressure to you and you're just going to tighten this. And you'll notice with sergers, let me see if I can rotate this. Uh, the needles aren't actually even with each other. One's going to be slightly higher than the other. I know that when I first started using it, but these are attached. Even up here, uh, there's a bar that you press the needles to at the top. You can kind of see it right here, how this one sits higher than the other one. And that is perfectly normal. All right, now that I have my needles in and I'm not going anywhere, I'm going to start taking this and threading it. I'm going to back this up. So with this, I'm going to take a piece, run it through the top of one, and then down. I have everything set to the default uh, tension, which is four. And this is what it all comes with whenever you get them out of the box. And let's see, you cannot see the bottom half of this now. There you go. And I'm following the guide that's on the back of mine, which is this loop. It goes under six and seven. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You're going to pull out this piece right here which is eight, you're going to pull it. On to nine. And there is this little hook right here that goes under this piece. You're going to thread it through there, which is this tiny little eye. They normally recommend using tweezers. I, I don't use the tweezers because I find them more cumbersome. It through a portion. And this is a trick I do. I wrap it behind this because it's supposed to go under here. But I've noticed that if I just loop it behind this top piece, I can still grab it and pull it the way it's supposed to go. Just make sure you're not wrapping it around this. Let me. Oh my God. What type of dog? Pain in the butt. Come here, buddy. Come here. Come say hi. Come here. Dogs. Come here. Up. You want to see? Look. Yes. Up here. Up. There we <gasps> go. Oh. Best sewing buddy ever. So 50% border collie, 20% beagle. Oh. I love border collies. So <laughs> you go. I love that dog. I love your dog. <laughs> so I'm going to unstring this so I can show you again. So, you want to take this, run it through this eye. FYI, Mickey, we have six minutes. All right, we got six minutes left. Cool. Go and run it like this over here, behind this, and then pull out the back. Because everyone's trying to get it through that little gap, and that's not easy. So from there, I'm going to run this green one through the same sequence, but there is a difference between step seven and eight. And I'm just going to run it through the top since it's the same process on each. And this one goes to five and six. You don't go through that one. You go up seven. Go through the eye of eight. Eight. 
And you want to have these off at an angle on the bee dogs. All right. So now we're going to head to the needles. I have a red thread for my right needle and a white thread for my left. And you're going to go through two, three, and behind this metal plate. So you're going to want to make sure you get behind that. And follow that metal plate back. And five. And make sure you get through here. We're almost done actually threading this. And this is the hardest part of this machine. There we go. Right through the back, under the feed dogs, and out to the side. And then white thread, same thing. Through the top hoop. Right here. And you're going to go down and under and over. Following the lines. Put on this bar and then thread the other needle. And from there, you have it pretty well done. So, any questions on how to thread this? Because the trick is going from right to left and just doing rep like a lot of times. Repetition makes it easier and a lot smoother. From there. Um, get a piece of scrap fabric. I'm putting this back on. You close this. And this one time you have this press if it raised or that will mess up your tension. I have everything on the right side set to the highlighted black number, which is one, three, and five, which is standard. I have it set to cut, put my dish right there. And if I did it right, I did it. All right, so I made a jam. Just taking this out, taking out that foot, that little finger. All right, I took the finger out and it works. Cool. I I've never used that finger. I just know it goes to it. I'll thread it right. I just took the finger out and make sure you have your uh, press for it down or it's going to bunch. So that's how you use thread a serger. Any questions? Nope, I'm good. All right. So I'm going to thank everyone for coming to this class. I'm sorry my phone kept on falling out and we had to stop so many times. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you. Be getting my first surgery in about a week, so that was really helpful. Oh, good, good. Just want to remind you guys that on Monday the 16th, we are having garbing for expecting and breastfeeding moms, if you are interested in that or know someone who is. And thank you, Mickey. Thank, thank you very you much, much, Mickey. You're awesome. You. All right, guys, thank you. And I am stopping the recording.